When I go to um, I go to a festival and I listen to a band playing through a line array, and and you hear the drums. You know the drummer does a roll around the toms and it goes click 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 like that. There's no tone. You know what we want to hear is bling 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 bling. You know that's what that's what a drum kit should sound like. That's what you can do with Function One. We started Turbo Sound in 1977, uh, John and myself, and uh, we had great success with the TMS range. I think the TMS3 was the, the dominant loudspeaker cabinet for most of the 80s. With Turbo Sound, we were very strong in the live area, and, uh, and we did sound for the Pink Floyd and uh, uh, you know, Roger Waters' solo tour, which I mixed. Um, Status Quo, Jackson Brown, Santana, all those big bands. When Turbo Sound was sold in, uh, I think it was the late 80s, um, I was part of the, the legal team that I think I was involved in that transaction. We had to reinvent ourselves, and that is what we've done. We re reinvented as Function One. We didn't really release any products till probably about 2000. Um, we spent some time coming up with new technology. It was rather good because we were, we were in charge of ourselves and we were able to pursue exactly as we wished. My background is a sound engineer, a live sound, um, yeah, since the uh, 1970s. Myself, I've been involved in um, the music industry since actually probably 1969. I started designing cabinets in 1971 because it became very obvious that we didn't, there, were, there wasn't any PAs to speak of. Certainly not musical PAs. There was pu always been public address with big horns for voices, but uh, at that time there was no real uh, full range PAs. So we set about building. Mm -hmm. And uh, in that time, I guess I've taught myself. My name is Tony Andrews. My name's Anne Andrews. It's very much a family business. I do quite a lot of different things. John looks after a lot of questions that people have around the world about, about settings. I like to make things, so I like to be involved in, in the practical side of research, uh, making new parts uh, for drivers or speakers. But the most important person in the company is Anne my wife. My role in the business is uh, I'm finance director. I also take care of uh, some of the marketing uh, duties and also the direction of the business as well. So I've got many hats really. I'm involved in specifying systems uh, for clubs and concerts. Um, that is assembling the different products to make a system that works. I'm technical director of Function One. Um, I design loudspeakers. I'm honoured to work with such a talented bunch of engineers, you know, T and Tony and John, both legends, and uh, it's great, they're, they're tireless, and uh, it doesn't matter, anybody can phone up any time of the day, you know, they take care, they, they want to pass on the information, they're, they just live for it. What is Function One? Let me think about it. It's actually in southern England, not far from Gatwick. We've got about 12,000 square feet. It's not so big as about 16 people all together. We're not a company that's driven by marketing. I think that's pretty obvious to most people. We're a company driven by passion for sound. Function Mun means um, a special kind of approach towards audio. We can make anything from scratch, pretty much. So if there's a new cabinet, we make it there. Or we modify it until, it, until it's right. Once it's made, it gets drawn and sent out for production, where, and it comes back to us with, sprayed with paint. We really, really try to make the speakers as true as possible and uh, to create the best illusion of, of uh, audio as possible. I think audio, audio is an illusion. It should approach reality. So we do the, the fitting of the flying, Obviously the speakers, the waveguides, um, 
everything. So everything comes to function one in Surrey. And that's where we do all the quality control. We do all the final assembly and checking and shipping to wherever it needs to go. I think we're in nearly every, certainly on every continent. Um, we're in nearly every country in the world now. What is function one? Well, I think it's the best loudspeaker company on the planet. Principles, um, I guess, purity of audio. To do as little as possible uh, correction to a speaker. We spend time getting the driver and enclosure or waveguide combination as correct as possible. To, to have a speaker that, that can be used um, without any EQ, um, without DSP. A loudspeaker and an enclosure and a horn is a, is a system and everything has to be in balance and uh, we try to find those balances. Um, we don't use corrective EQ. To me that's an admission of failure actually. Um, I come in the beginning when I started uh, there wasn't equalizer, it certainly wasn't DSP and EQ had only just been invented and it, nobody even thought about taking a loudspeaker and then adding, you know, corrective EQ to it. You had to get your speaker right, and I still think that's the right approach. If you apply system EQ to a loudspeaker system, what you do is you apply a characteristic to everything that comes through that system. So if you're mixing a show, then everything, every channel of your mix will have that characteristic, uh, that EQ, gives. So what happens is that every part of your mix tends to come from the same place. It sounds like it comes from the same place. If you can leave the system very flat and then mix with your mixing desk, uh, then each correction that you do is specific to that channel and things can come from different places and your mix has more space. We also work on high efficiency. If you get a good conversion of the amplifier energy to, to acoustic output, then you don't have to push it so hard, distortion levels stay low, um, use ele less electricity. It's, uh, I can't understand why anybody would think anything else, to be honest. It's so obvious that you've got to get a good conversion. Your typical loudspeaker is only about, the ones in your living room are about two or three percent efficient, that's all. And, with good horn loading, good horn loading, you can get to maybe 30% efficiency. But it's a bit like when you um, when you take an engine and you make it very high performance, it starts to get wild, and you, it not so easy to control. So I think a lot of people don't do horn loaded systems because they're they're actually very they are wild, and you don't. It's hard to get a flat response or an even response, shall we say. Flat's impossible. I don't know anything that's ever been flat. Um, so I guess those, those are my principles. Something that I'm always uh, trying to hear from speakers is the sound, is that the speaker isn't there. That the sound should be between me and the speakers or, or anywhere else, but the sound shouldn't appear to come from the speaker. We firmly rooted in the idea that it's the people on the dance floor are the people in the concert room who are the, are the important ones. So we do this to, to make their enjoyment as much as possible. Don't um, drink the marketing Kool-Aid, you know. We don't overmarket our stuff and we don't pretend anything that isn't. You know, I mean, good quality audio is about truth, is about high fidelity and we try to maintain that in our dealings and um, in, our, in our equipment. I think the biggest difference between Function One and all the other speaker manufacturers is that we use cone drivers in the mid-range. Which means that compression drivers, which have, um, they are efficient, but they're usually quite unpleasant or a lot of distortion. So if you can push the crossover point to five kilohertz, they become uh, like a high frequency unit only or a tweeter, uh, they're much better behaved. And we can do that because we have this cone mid-range 
technology that we've been developing since about 1977. It has that effect of bringing sound towards you. The sound comes all out of the speaker towards you. The other thing is that we, our bass tends to be horn-loaded bass. Um, we've, many, many of these things we've achieved patents for because of their novelty value. Um, and the bass is uh, straight horn-loaded. I've heard systems recently where the music was almost undanceable because the, the bass was, just seemed to be so not part of the rest of the, of the sound. You have to feel uh, part of the music. You, know, you don't want to dance and feel the music's somewhere over there. It's got to be here. It's got to be an extension of you and part of you. You've got to feel emotionally connected. So I think that's another big difference, is that our, our bass merges seamlessly with the mid-range. It's all one thing and there's no reverse waves being used that give you a strange phase and um, cancellation results. Try function one and listen for the reality that you hear in the sound. You, you, will hear, you will hear the difference in your microphones, you will hear the difference when you EQ, you'll hear a difference when you push a fader. Everything is more sensitive. It's like driving a Ferrari, you know, you turn the wheel like that and you go around a the corner. There's no, it, it is, you know, it is um, responsive. There you go, that's a good word. It's very responsive and uh, very transparent. The speakers are even and dynamically the same across the spectrum. They can do any kind of music at all. They, they excel at all kinds of music. Everything from vocals to classical, dance, um, rock and roll, doesn't matter. Um, it's complete rubbish to say one's, one system is better for another. Um, maybe the problems are not so noticeable with certain kinds of music, but I think we've got our stuff to a point where it can do anything, no problem at all. In the first Gulf War, when they had the stealth bombers, the facets were reflecting the radar in a way that um, wasn't being picked up by, you know, there was no direct reflection. So the facets and the, of, on, the, on the axe head help with the dispersion and the, and the loading. The mid-range technology, you know, it, it requires a form, so the form follows the function. And in fact, it looks like it does because that's the shape that works. We, we just always had a problem with black boxes. I'm not a fan of black. I don't do darkness. Um, and purple's always been um, in my roots. Goes back to Jimi Hendrix and Purple Haze. I suppose it's, a, you know, to a certain extent, it's a spiritual thing, really. It's, a, it's color rather than darkness. Distinctive, it's not black, it's still dark, it doesn't get in the way, but it gives it a character. And, uh, it, you know, it, the, the speakers are an expression. They're an expression of um, my gift to the world, if you like, or my contribution to the well-being of the planet, I hope. I think everybody has an opinion about sound and what they like. And I think audiences, that, that you know, they might not be able to talk about it, about what it is and, and explain it, but they have an opinion about it. They know whether they're having a good time or not. They know whether the sound's good or not. They know whether it's hurting them. They know, so I think it's wrong to say um, just because people are not in this business that they can't tell the difference between a good sound and a bad sound. I don't think I hear any difference with other people. I think that my sensitivity may be there. But what I think is different is the fact that I've spent 40 years training my brain to understand what my ears are, are telling it. When you practice listening, then you, you learn to separate things. But, uh, but I think, no, I don't think I hear differently. I do it, I, my reason for doing it is uh, I have a great joy in the experience of music, especially with community of people. And I just wish to share that. And for me, a part of it is, a big part of it is to have the sound as clean and clear and accessible to the fine qualities of the human hearing system.